Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to this live intraday strategy webinar on SB Trade Desk. Michael Boutros here with you this morning. We just got the release of uh, consumer price index from the United States coming in more in line with expectations. Core uh, month on month did miss with a slight downtick to 0.1 from 0.3. We were expecting a downtick, but a little bit larger than expected. Most importantly, the year on year core fell to 2.2 from 2.3. So a softening of um, sort of the core read of inflation, which strips out food and energy. This is something to pay attention to. Certainly the inflationary gauge is what the markets have been looking for, or at least the Fed has been stressing out of the dual mandate as the laggard. So um, the Goldilocks print, uh, Eileen says mixed print. Yep, mixed at best, I would say pretty in line to mixed. Um, what we're looking for, guys, is for the data to be just strong enough that it doesn't cause concern but not strong enough where it would put pressure on the Fed to tighten next month. Remember, we still have the November FOMC announcement and then the December. Markets are largely pricing in December still. If we take a look at the um, Fed fund futures, we're still about 67% for a December rate hike. Next month, falling even more. Yesterday, this was at 17%. Now it's at 15 So as long as the data continues to come in a little lackluster and not too strong, um, the markets are interpreting that as a go for December. All right, so you're not seeing too much volatility. Dollar did take a little bit of a nudge uh, right on the release. Here's what it looks like. Uh, I was tracking just now the Aussie dollar and dollar CAD for some entries. Dollar CAD with the pullback, still looking at that European low. Same thing here on the Aussie, trading just below the European highs, which is 76.89. So we will go over both of these, uh, Aussie and Kiwi. Uh, did have positions on the Aussie dollar and the Kiwi dollar. Unfortunately, it got stopped out of both of those. Um, Aussie, I think, was a very tight stop. It was about seven pip stop. Kiwi, I think, was a little bit bigger, about 18 pips. But trying to call a high didn't work. Kept on rallying all through the night. So we'll take a look at some of those levels. Kiwi coming into a big level earlier today, which I think is a much better short opportunity um, that we might have just missed. So we will take a glance at that as well. All right, so we'll go over the dollar index, dollar yen. Uh, we'll take a quick look at Aussie key. Eileen, if you're in the room here, I know I see you right here. Um, that trade that we were talking about last week, turning right ahead of that major slope of influence. I highlighted that over on daily effects as well, but we'll take a look at that. Uh, Kiwi and Aussie, as we mentioned earlier, CAD, dollar yen. And we'll take a quick look at the commodity block. Not much going on there, um, but we will take a quick reference. All right, as always, any questions or trade setups, as always, guys, feel free to throw it on the message board as we go through. Let's jump into the dollar. Here's what the relative performance looks like heading into the U.S. Open. You can see that the dollar is a little bit on its back foot today. So you have the Kiwi, Sterling, Aussie with really nice, strong, broad advance. The entire com block really joining in this rally here today. Uh, biggest performer, Kiwi dollar, like I said, up 0.9%. You did get some stronger than expected CPI numbers out of New Zealand last night, which did charge a rally. Tried to fade that a little too early, uh, but that did come into a major area of resistance, so we'll take a look at that. Sterling, we had the uh, release of Sterling CPI numbers as well, which came in slightly stronger than expected. You saw a top side pop there, up 0.8%, and Aussie. Obviously, the RBA didn't really give us much with the release of the minutes last night. I didn't really see too much in there that was um, very eventful. Uh, nonetheless, the Aussie did see a rally and continued rally with the com block here of 0.6%. Now, the Japanese yen, which is what we'll go over first here, you know, it looks like it's going to break that near-term channel support I highlighted last night. Uh, I am looking for some near-term weakness. Guys, uh, keep in mind... Christian Kerr just published a piece over for us uh, on SB Trade Desk with an interesting uh, time analysis cycle for where dollar yen is, really highlighting the second part of this week. So I encourage you guys to check that out if you haven't seen it. That got published uh, uh, not within the hour here. So definitely take a look at that report when you get a chance. All right, <clears throat> here's what the dollar index looks like. So this is the ICE dollar index. Start off the week, we were talking about a little bit of a lackluster trade here. As momentum is breaking back below 70, you kind of really were me meandering around this 1618 extension. Look, at the end of the day, nothing's changed. Major key support on the near term remains 97.26 into 
July high day close, key 618 retracement of the decline from the December high, and you have that slope line, which is in there right now as well. Okay, a little more room to the downside before you even start to approach that trigger. So I do think you can give up a little bit more on the dollar here um, without turning necessarily overall bearish just yet, but looking a little lower on the immediate term. Here's what the uh, Dow Jones FXCM dollar index looks like. A little bit different of a picture, and we noted this yesterday, in that the ICE dollar index failed ahead of the 2016 open. The Dow Jones dollar index looks like it came right off a of slope resistance, now checking the 2016 open again, now as support, okay? So, little dicey here, uh, and those divergences, again, can happen at major market turns, so you wanna be a little cautious. Did the ICE uh, gap at the open yesterday? Well, New York closed and Tuesday open. Uh, let's take a look. I think it might have, yeah, from here to here. This was the Sunday open, Eileen. Don't really see any gaps per se, no. Not in near-term price action. Does look like it could have made a gap here near-term on the open of today's candle. But it's it's really, really, it's really slight, Eileen. It's right here. Uh, the interesting part is that we just fill that gap and move lower which in actuality near term in price action is development that would be interpreted as bearish. So with that slight gap that you just noticed, it's actually a nice eye, um, you broke down even lower, came back, checked it as resistance almost to the pip here before turning off. So keep your eye on this range and inherently you can play these near term opening ranges when it fills the gap as a near term opening range in itself. So if it breaks higher, you'd look for the recovery back to the weekly open, um, but a rejection of it keeps the focus lower while below that region. I saw it on the FinViz future site. Ah, gotcha. Gotcha. There's times where the gaps can be really beneficial and offer us some opportunity. Something like this is just I would look at as interpreting near-term price action. I wouldn't necessarily say this is an opportunity just yet. But moving along, any other questions on the dollar index? Eileen, I hope that helps, um, whether it's the ICE dollar index or the Dow Jones. For the Dow Jones, I'm really just looking at that uh, yearly open sitting as support. I suspect we will, we will make a break below and check the high day close from back here in July. Um, let's clean these levels up a little bit, shall we? We don't need that 618 any longer. I do want to see what this retracement looks like. Okay. Okay. These are the re revised levels to take into account the new high that we're making here or that we made just last week. Um, I still would be looking for the high day close at 21, uh, or excuse me, 12.102. Uh, and a break there, you're risking a little bit more of a precipitous drop, but this would be sort of the near term, two near term support targets I'd be looking at, at least for initial support on this pullback for the dollar. All right, you're sitting at the 2016 open right now. Uh, Eileen says the gap's making me more nervous than in the past, yes. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't worry too much about it, Eileen, especially when it's something like that where it's intra week. Um, the major risk for gaps really comes on the weekends, holding position over into the Friday close. So, wouldn't be too concerned with that just yet. Yep, my pleasure. Okay, let's jump into last night's setups. So, first things first, again, uh, CPI numbers, obviously we went over those uh, coming out stronger than, or excuse me, weaker than expected to mixed on that release. Um, here's what the dollar yen looked like last night. The broader picture for the dollar yen remains exceptionally clear, which is very odd because it's dollar yen, but it still remains pretty clear and the risk um, 
the rally or the upside bias remains at risk below 104.47. Um, we went over this yesterday in the webinar as well, so I don't want to spend too much time on it, but the basic premise is, look, if we slip below this median line parallel, or the lower median line parallel, um, you're basically risking a drop towards 103.54 and 103.35, and this is a little bit more of a key support you'd look for a hold if the broader near-term trend is going to stay weighted to the upside. Now, as I noted earlier in the session, Kerr, um, Christian did write uh, a nice piece talking about the cyclical um, tendencies that's coming up in the second part of this week. So you can envision a scenario where maybe dollar yen starts to move a little bit lower here and rips towards the end or kind of drifts a little bit sideways here and, and shows us a much deeper correction. Excuse me, for me, the longer term play still remains constructive while within this slope. Okay, this is an embedded slope, but this slope right here has offered so many pivots in price. Resistance, resistance, okay, if you take it to the median line, resistance, turned ahead of it, which is bearish, again giving us indication that we might have some waning momentum. If we look at the RSI signature, also divergence on that high. So there was a lot to look at last night to suggest, look, this thing could find us a near-term pullback here. Here's what dollar-yen looks like right now. So the daily hasn't changed. We're still sitting right within this key range near term. Also note that heading into 103.20, 103.30 level, you also have that 100-day moving average. So the levels are pretty well mapped out here on dollar yen. Here's what it looks like on the near term chart. And here's the hourly. Okay, so the focus is on this slope here. We broke below it, we checked it as resistance, the risk still remains for a move lower back towards that 103.54 target, and again, last night I was highlighting this level in time because that's where the slope was. At this point, you want to take it out a little bit further, move that target up a little bit higher and really focus on that 103.55 level, 103.54 level, a little more so heading into the U.S. close. All right, but I do think that the risk still remains to the downside here for dollar yen while below the weekly open. We'd really need to get back above the weekly open. So let's move this near-term bearish invalidation level sort of to here. If we get back above the weekly open, specifically 104.47, you're looking for that 104.86 target, and that's a, a big 100% extension from the entire advance. So a little bit of a contraction in volatility so far this week. You're seeing the ATR really start to tighten up a little bit. Um, but typically this can happen right before near-term breakout. So the focus is on this range right here for the dollar yen. If we break below 103.54, look for that correction towards 102.36, the lower parallels. Um, more so, if we find a near-term pull higher, I'd look to be selling this towards that move to that 25 line or that 50 line there in slope. Here's the four hour looks like. Okay, so the broader trade remains constructive while within this pitchfork right here. This near-term slope is what's triggering or having us look for a possible near-term break to the downside before we move higher. All right, and it kind of matches with what the dollar's doing, right? Dollar's kind of meandering here near resistance. I could see a push higher maybe, again, to try to press this monthly open, or this weekly open, rather. Uh, but at the end of the day, I still think you need to look for one more low before rallying here in dollar yen. Questions on the Japanese yen? Keep in mind later today we do get the release of the Fed's beige book, uh, which is again the updated assessment from the 12 districts. Not likely to be a major market mover, but that release does come at 2 p.m., so keep that in mind for the dollar crosses here, and specifically with dollar yen uh, can oftentimes be um, very sensitive to U.S. data. So here's that data later today. Ahead of that, you do get build, building permits. I'm sorry, this is tomorrow afternoon. Uh, ahead of that, you do get building per, permits and housing starts. So a nice update. We'll cover that um, tomorrow. Actually, I'm corrected. Guys, there won't be a webinar tomorrow morning. I will be out of the office. Uh, Jamie's webinar will still be at 1 p.m. Eastern, and I'll be back on Thursday 
uh, at 8.30 regular time. So quick Hallow um, update there. Wesley's saying, do you think there will be a Halloween surprise from the BOJ? Well, look, Wes, if they're going to do it, <laughs> that certainly is the time for them, right? Um, they've been known with that Halloween bomb drop. It could happen. It could happen. It might not happen. I really don't know. And Wes, like I always say, I can't trade around that. You know, I'll be mindful as we head into the BOJ, specifically for the end of October. But, um, you know, how do you trade that? Crude and silver, Conwell, we'll definitely go over both of those. All right, so any other questions on the dollar-yen before we move off? Basically looking uh, for an exhaustion blow-off here to see one more low before we start to continue back on the upside. But the broader trend is remaining higher. Even on this four-hour chart, some waning divergence right into that high. Price action at a higher high, the oscillator at a lower high, holding 60 as resistance. All right, so that is dollar-yen. Uh, next up on tap from last night was the Aussie Kiwi, and this was just a really, really sweet reversal. I just wanted to highlight where we are in price. As far as intraday trading this, I'm looking for shorts um, let me take a step back. The break that we made last night, as I warned right here, did pull back and actually even close that four-hour candle back above the 2016 open. Still, all the indications remain. You turned ahead of major resistance in the July high. You saw some strong divergence, both reference points sub-70 here, which is a strong signal. As price action made a final higher high, the oscillator made a lower high. And we broke below, back below the 2016 open, which was support heading into the close of last week. Now, again, we pulled back higher, but the momentum signature, and even on the near-term chart, if you look at the one hour, still looks pretty bearish ever since that turn from the highs. There's your first dribble and deepest cut into 40 uh, in momentum, struggling to break 50 on the upside. So it still looks like it could move lower. Ultimately, you do want to buy it. Um, but I'd be looking down near like 105.40 into the monthly open as an initial area of where I'd start to look back for the long side. You have the 100-day moving average, slope support, and the actual January low from the start of the year, all converging right there. Even on the, near ter even on the uh, daily chart, you also do note that you're seeing some divergence here. Price action making, or the oscillator making a slightly lower low or lower high rather, excuse me, as price action pushed into that final high on the 14th. So I'm looking for a pullback. You failed to hold above the 200-day moving average, ultimately looking to buy that pullback uh, with a break above this region, targeting more critical resistance up at 108.70, 108.76, this region right here, and ultimately, obviously, the key 618 retracement of the entire 2016 range at 109.15. So I think we get some play. Again, I don't need to remind you guys where this slope originates from. It's that 2014 January low. Huge inflection slope. And when you find these, they tend to be golden. You want to really pay attention. Same slope off the lows from October of last year. Boom, boom. Resistance, resistance, turned ahead. And we'll discount this move that we saw back in September as a false break on the quick recovery and snap higher. So pretty big region of resistance. Wouldn't be too surprised to see a little bit more of a pullback, ultimately looking to get back on the long side for Aussie Kiwi from lower down. Any questions on the Aussie Kiwi update? Eileen says, thanks for putting together the Aussie Kiwi, or thanks for putting the Aussie Kiwi together. Also waiting for the buys instead of wanting to wait uh, past uh, the prints last night. Yeah, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. And to be quite honest with you, I was a little thrown off. I was trying to trade Kiwi and Aussie individually. Uh, I was kind of thrown off because they were both ripping and kind of gives me a little bit of a skewed uh, bias for Aussie Key. Long story short, take every trade on its own merits and even on the near-term and longer-term charts, it does look like it's ready for a little bit more of an exhaustion pullback in my opinion. Okay, does it mean we can't rally from here, guys, and see another pop higher, maybe even back into the 107 handle here before turning over? Uh, but the broader story is uh, looking for a bigger setback here in Aussie Key to get long. 
Questions on Aussie Key? Three, that was number four. Uh, let's jump into number five is Kiwi Dollar from last night. Uh, I just wanted to give you a quick update. This was highlighted early in the week on the Sunday update. We were at resistance. It kind of just made sense to try to take a stab at it. So I did take a quick stab um, at a short. I was about 18 or 17 pips off the high. My stop was just above that. Obviously, I got stopped out in this final rip into more significant resistance here at 72, uh, 13, 72, 18. Here's what Kiwi looks like now. <clears throat> Wes says, can we short Kiwi now? Uh, I mean, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, if you're asking me, would you short Kiwi now? I would have liked to take that position earlier in the session right against that high. Um, I do think that you want to wait at this point. You got about 40 minutes heading into the U.S. Open to see if you can get one last stab into it. Um, but, yeah, you're getting divergence, albeit weak divergence. Remember, when the divergent signals are above 70, these are typically weak signals especially when both reference points are there. Uh, nonetheless, you are getting some of it, okay? Price action pressing into a fresh high, the oscillator struggling to make that set, that fresh high in momentum. So the near-term targets, he says, I'm already short from 72. Oh, right on. So he's saying, what will be the near-term targets? So the first target, West would be right here at 71.75, okay? This is the confluence zone that we, that I took the short off yesterday, was right off that level. Um, and when we broke through it last night, we checked it as support and then rallied off. There's a lot going on there, aside from the basic 100% extension from the advance off the lows. You have this sliding parallel right here. Resistance, pivot, resistance, break, support, break. Right there, we broke through it last night, checked it as support. And the longer term slope, let me just show it to you on the daily chart. This right here, which converges also on the 100-day moving average. And that's all right around 71, 75 uh, or thereabouts. So this is big. First near-term support target. If we break below this, look for 71.45. Ooh, then this becomes a big region here too. 71.18, 71.24, and that, again, coincides on a nice median line within this same formation. All right, so that's how I would play it if if the break materialized with a move sub 71.75, but that, to me, is really sort of the marker that we need to get through um, to really push this lower. I'm looking for near 70. The 70 handle, so a longer-term position here, Wes, or are you talking about? 7170. Oh, he says yes. So from the longer term prospect, if I just take a zoom out here, um, the one thing I would say before you look at 70, or let me just take a step back, Wes. This is what I would say if you're looking for a longer term break. This is the main level you need to look at. Very basic. Slope support off the yearly low. Here's the January low. Here's the low that you made in May. If you take a parallel of that and extend it off the high that you made in June, it literally caught the high that we made there in September. So we know that we're working with a decent slope here. That converges all in that same region that we highlighted last week. Okay, remember, we turned bullish on Kiwi as we were heading to 70.50. Now, I didn't think that the break was going to go above 72 <laughs> or 71.80. I was looking for a short here, like I said. Uh, but at the end of the day, we're right back at resistance. Bigger, bigger resistance. This is also um, former 618 extension. You have the 50% retracement of the range. Uh, pretty decent pretty decent level. So my point being, uh, if you're looking for a move lower, this is a level of great interest. I would hate to see this hold and a rebound and you get stopped out for 50 pips or, or so, um, even 40 pips. It's basically 70, 40 into 70, 50 is the key range of support. My point being, Wes, is if you're looking for the larger move, if it gets below this, I don't really have much at 70. It's kind of just right there. I'd be looking for like 69, 60. You have the 200-day moving average, the 1618 extension, or even 69, okay? The 50% retracement of the entire 2016 range, and that converges on the lower parallel here later in the month. So my point being, around your targets of 70, I'd be looking first at 7050, 
And then if that breaks, I'd actually be just looking way below 70, down at 69.60 as an initial target uh, for that move. Does that make sense? He says, okay, thanks for clearing my doubts. Hey, cheers, Wes. Yeah, I like the idea. I like the entry. I would just be cautious because if this breakout clears 72.18, um, you could check the early um, or the monthly open, excuse me, that takes you into like 72.70. So I'm not sure what your hurt threshold is on that uh, trade, but that's sort of the next breakout region you'd look for if it does mount a rally past 72.18. All right, that is Kiwi Dollar checking resistance. Watch that 72.17, 72.18 level heading into the U.S. Open. That is number five. Number six, Aussie Dollar. Oh well, here is uh. By the way, I might as well just show it to you. Good, bad, and the ugly. Uh, here's the scalp I took on the Kiwi last night. It ended up being not too long of a trade. Um, so we made that reversal. Uh, there was some divergence into that high. Uh, there was a near-term trigger that gave out. So I kind of jumped into the trade a little bit late here on the upswing with a stop just against that high. Okay. Now, inevitably, it did rally into that. And like I said, cleared into the final target that we just made at that 72.17 level. So from this standpoint right now, this is the target or this was the near-term trigger I would have liked to play with. And we would still be in that trade if we had taken it at this point. But long story short, uh, watch that major resistance near term heading into the U.S. Open. If it's going to give us a snack back, this would be the region you'd start to look for. Them. All right. Moving right along. Aussie dollar. Here's what the Aussie says. And again, not much of a... You know, in my opinion, there wasn't really much from what Robert Lowe, or Robert Lowe, from what uh, Dr. Lowe said uh, last night or from the RBA minutes. You know, from the RBA, sort of the highlights that we're hitting, the wires here, it says that they see a reasonable prospect of sustained economic growth, but still considerable uncertainty in labor and housing markets, keeping the door open, essentially, uh, for further easing. Uh, one of the other uh, sort of headlines that came out was new forecast for third quarter CPI will help board in considering the outlook. Headwinds from mining investment drop appear to be waning. Um, important to consider underemployment uh, to assess the jobs market and the housing market still needs to be monitored closely. So all of these cautious sort of rhetoric uh, really leaving the markets open to interpretation. If we take a quick look at the uh, futures for the overnight index swaps, here's what they look like. And the probability or the next real material probability for a cut doesn't really surmount until late 2017, not even. Highest read that you get here is about 28.2%, which is interesting because the rhetoric has been sort of cautious at best, but the markets keep continuing to sap expectations for that rate cut. And you're seeing the Aussie react in kind. Um, So that being said, I guess there's not really much else to say about this. Here's what the Aussie looks like. So we broke above this near-term descending channel formation, the major resistance that we were talking about earlier in the week, 76.32, 76.42. Um, this region right here, you're looking at the high day reversal close that we made here, or the high day close rather, off the highs for September and the basic key 618 retracement of the advance or the decline off that late September high. Um, the rallies fizzling out or the major level for the rallies right here, it turned just ahead of it, show you on the near term chart right up there. You're looking at the um, August high day close and basic trend line resistance tagged three times now off the highs from August. 
So from the Aussie standpoint, I don't know what to do. You know, I can't get excited about taking a long from here. You're already a great deal off the highs uh, for the session. The high actually came in at 76.90. You're already trading at 76.60. So I would like to see this thing make another run at the highs into the U.S. session. I would be looking to try to fade a rally sub 77, um, but I don't know if we get it. You know, we had divergence again here heading into the highs that we just made. Um, there's even a support trigger that I already gave out. So if you're looking for fresh exposure here on uh, Aussie, that's what I would say I'd be looking for. Look for that last stretch higher. I do not want to get involved on the long side from here heading into that structural resistance. If you make it through 77, look for the zoom and retest to get back in, looking for the 2016 high day close, that's 77.35. Um, so the breakout targets are clear. I just think you need to find a little bit more of an exhaustion here, pull back before uh, you know, mounting a larger rally through that trend line resistance. Okay, look for near-term support right around here. It's your monthly open. September high day close. Gives you a range of 76.42 into 76.52 uh, as near-term support here. And that's sort of a near-term area I'd be looking for. Uh, some reprieve from the downside if this is going to continue higher. We'll obviously have the U.S. Open looks. Watch for near-term resistance at 77. Any questions on Aussie? Any questions on Kiwi? Or any questions on Aussie Kiwi? <laughs> All right, next up is Dollar Cad number seven. So the Dollar Cad finally making a breakdown to the short side. Um, a welcomed break, in my opinion but still within the same confines of the descending formation that we were looking at on the near term. So before I get into this, uh, here's what the daily chart looks like. No change to any of the levels that we've been following for the last couple of weeks. Um, you know, the big major reversal that we made in that big old outside day when we highlighted it back on the 13th has really continued to be our guidance. Ever since turning bearish there, we've continued to hold below the 200-day moving average. We got held up a little bit here on initial support, slope support here in red, converging on a basic 236 from the advance off the yearly low. We sat there for a couple of days. This is a welcome final break that we're getting. So on the daily chart, as long as we stay below 31.12, I like continuing this lower, looking for larger targets at 130.25, that 100-day moving average. And this 38.2 actually is a nice confluence region. This is the reversal day close that we made here on the 24th, which is, of course, the Brexit uh, day, June 24th. Uh, and it's a 38.2 retracement of the range. So those both converge dead on uh, near 129.88, 129.87. Finally got the trigger break that we were looking at. Here's a four-point trigger break as well in momentum. Everything looks good for a little bit more of a setback here in dollar CAD. Now, it's not going to be a straight shot because there's a lot of interest in this trade, but um, the technicals are indeed turning over. Here's what it looks like on the 60-minute chart. And here's what it looked like previously. on SB. Okay, this is what we look like early in the week. We opened at support, we talked about that, the rally came right into the median line, a little bit of a pro, but a quick reversal on that uh, in, in Europe 
last night or yesterday, excuse me, it's the start of the week. Uh, and here's the break. This region was big, not only because of that basic 236 retracement, but it was also the weekly open and the monthly open. So this is why as long as we stay below this 30, uh, 3112, 3120 region, I still want to favor the downside in dollar CAD near term. I do think you could see a little bit more of a pop higher into the U.S. trade session just on account of the fact that we're coming off the actual median line. This was a sliding parallel, the same slope. Resistance, resistance, support, 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 break. It's actually offering some instant resistance. But also, the actual concerted median line of the slope is right here. And that gave us a little bit of a pop um, heading into the futures market open just now. So long story short, I want to continue to maintain a downside bias while below the monthly open. Uh, what would put me bullish again or the bearish invalidation level would be a pop back through that 3150 mark. If we get back above this, um, you know, you, you possibly could risk a, a rally right back up into that 3250 mark. That being said, looking to sell rallies below the monthly open, downside targets 3029. 29.87 and more key support down here right into 29.50, 29.45. That's basic slope convergence of the 50 line there and the lower median line parallel. On the daily chart, that's right. Well, copy it for you. That's right here. All right. Just for the sake of keep, keeping the daily chart a little less cluttered, I didn't have it on here, but you get the picture. Questions on dollar cat? And that was number seven. Okay, we're making good time. Um, where is Conwall? Hello, sir. Crude and silver. Yes, let's do a quick walk around the commodity block. Uh, there's not really much, in my humble opinion, you, until you get the, the breakout. Um, so let's start off with, uh, what was your first one? I think you said crude, right? Here's what crude looks like. So crude is the one that's making a little bit more of a coil. Remember that slope that we added on last week? We even started this week by adding on this sliding parallel off the high. We're testing that right now as resistance. Um, if we break through the October, that's not right. If we break through this pivot here and we finally clear the upside, um, you're still looking for that slope to keep us in play. Remember, this is just a consolidation within the uptrend. We broke above a multi-year ML formation. Okay, and we're still within the confines of this slope. And that slope further highlights key support at 49, 48.97, whatever you want to call it, right here. So I'm constructive while well above here. The only thing that would make me bearish would be a break below 47.70. Former slope resistance now should offer support. Okay, so you're looking for this consolidation. As I always tend to mention, sometimes these, or on average, on whole, uh, typically these consolidation triangle wedge formations are continuation patterns. I have seen them be uh, terminal though. So if they do break to the downside, look for the correction. Uh, but the long story short is you're still within the confines of the uptrend here for crude. Here's what it looks like on the near term chart. Okay, those levels that we've highlighted for the last couple of weeks still in play. This is a four hour chart, Conwall. Again, you know, just for the sake of clarity, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to remove this, okay? Uh, take a snapshot if you want, uh, anyone in the room, and I'm just going to clean this chart up a little bit. This is also what I'd be looking at. And this is what I was looking at in the daily chart, basically trying to... All right, so <clears throat> highlights this right here, which is we're just what we were just looking at anyway. 5070, 
And if you get the top side break, you're looking for the subsequent targets of 51.63 and 52.50. A conservative way to also measure this, this is just classic technicals here. We'd be doing it this way. So measure the distance of the widest part of the consolidation pattern. Uh, and if you take a measurement of that move, it gives you a target way up here at 54 on a type of breakout play. The setback could get as deep as 46.70. Look where 46.70 would take us. Way down, basically below that key support. So again, really near term, but just something to keep in mind here for where crude prices are trading. Watch this consolidation pattern, um, Conwall. At the end of the day, if you do see a break above 51, you're looking for that rally towards 51.60 and 52.50. Moving right along to crude, um, you want to see silver. So, similar scenario in that you're seeing some consolidation here, as opposed to being near resistance, you're seeing some consolidation here near support for silver. Uh, again, bring your attention to the basic trend line support that's extending off the lows that we made for uh, the year, specifically here in January, tagged again in uh, May, late March, early May. Um, and here we are with the 200-day moving average just low. We're really giving... Uh, or even catching the extreme spikes here. So look for a close or look for a, a resolution to this consolidation pattern. Same type of play. You're short in silver at 1767. Um, you know, what's your target? Let me ask you this, Conwall. What's your target? If you're looking just to play this consolidation and you're just scalping this on a near term, you really shouldn't be targeting anything outside of 1740, 1738 here. Um, because at the end of the day, you're at a pretty big support level. So if you're trying to, you know, front run the break, Conwall, I see the reasoning behind it. Not something I'm usually a big fan of doing. Um, I'd rather wait for the break, wait for the pullback, then get short. But just keep in mind, man, you're coming into yearly trend line support. And I'm not saying that I'm necessarily bullish, but if you're looking to near-term trade this, you know, it could get back as high as 1786, even 1827 on a correction before we move lower. So just make sure that you have your stops pretty tight in. Um, 1744 and stop at 1786. 1744, I love that target. Uh, 1786, you're above the highs here. Yeah, that makes sense. The levels make sense, the, tar the targets make sense. Let me just see what the near-term picture looks here. Two hour. Yeah, so anyway, you slice it. This is actually a pretty decent slope. Watch what happens here, and literally watch this candle break out. If it breaks the downside, I think you're right on money. It might, get, it might even get deeper back into that trend line support. But if it does mount the top side break, this would be a basic break of resistance, resistance, break, check a support, and move off. So the close, or at least where we open up the U.S. trade session, is going to matter here. Uh, but your stop is pretty tight. Can't complain. I like that, Conwell. Looks good. Just watch this daily chart. Keep in mind, again, I can't really, I can't really stress this enough. You know, a lot of people tend to overlook these just basic slope support, but you have so much here. The 100% extension off the high, so it's already two equal legs down. The 50% retracement off the low, trend line support, and it's backed by the 200-day moving average. So, not surprised to see this thing hold up a little bit here near the lows. I like those levels though, Conwall. Uh, taking a look at gold, this is what gold looks like. It's a very similar scenario. Um, I 
don't have quite as big uh, structural support as we do in uh, silver, but it is Fibonacci support nonetheless. A 38.2 from the advance off the lows that you made in December of last year uh, gives us some really nice pivots here with the low that you made on Brexit and also the lows that you made into the start of this month. So the focus range for crew, uh, for gold near term is that 200-day moving average as resistance. That's basically 1265 and support into 1249. You're looking for a break of this range. Broader focus remains bear sub 1302. I'd love to look for some longs, some exhaustion down here into 1218 and 1210 if we do get a downside break. Uh, I think this would be nice areas of which we'd start to look for possible re-entry in the long side. Um, for gold. Questions on any of the commodities that we've been following? Silver was nine, gold was ten. All right. Um, I do have a couple. Oh, you're more than welcome, Kamal. I appreciate that. I do have a couple of different uh, setups I just want to bring to your attention. Uh, that I was following kind of last night. I was just playing around with the charts on it. Uh, Aussie Yen uh, coming into an interesting area. I don't think we're there just yet. Uh, and in combination with what the Yen is doing, if you do get the opportunity for another stretch, you know, another stretch high into like 80, 36, 80, uh, 60 even, I do think this might be an opportunity of a major level of resistance that you want to look at that might give us something uh, to play with on the short side. You're looking at the 618 extension from the advance off the lows, uh, not the Brexit low, okay? This is the low that you made from July. I'm not going to use that major emotional low because uh, it skews things a little bit, but if you take it off that low from, Ju from July, um, the high from that month and the subsequent low that we made in August, you can see that that 618 extension comes in just above the 200-day moving average, which has been a very nice pivot in price. Resistance, resistance, and the upper parallel for this formation that we've been in since the highs from 2014. So we've been in this slope. It's caught really nice inflections on the lows, really nice inflections along the high. All of those converge in this region here between 80.35 and 80.60. So definitely something to take a look at here on uh, Aussie N as we get deeper into the calendar month. Here's your monthly open. Oh, and one other thing I was I was noting last night is this could be an objective break of the monthly opening range, and I'm tending to think so. Uh, here's the 13th, or the 14th rather. We finally saw a break of the objective monthly opening range, which was basically right here was the monthly open at 77.40. You had the high right around 79, and we sat there for a good two weeks before finally breaking on the 14th. So that would give us an upside bias looking for a late month high. And certainly over the next couple of days, I'll be looking to see if that rally stretches into this key resistance level. So something to take note of there. We're already marking some divergence if we close at these levels on the daily chart. So look for some possible exhaustion. Wes, Euro Oz. Ha, huh. what am I talking about with Euro Oz? How could I forget, Wes? Yeah, we were wrong, man. That thing broke. <laughs> Plain and simple. Um, so Aussie Yen was number 11. Let's take a look at Euro Oz. Number 12. So... Yeah, it was a clean break in my humble opinion. There's really nothing for me to do here. If you're not chasing, uh, make sure you get some sort of stern pullback before you start to short it, but there's been no real opportunities. Uh, yesterday gave us the only real meaningful pullback into the low day close previously from August before moving lower again. But this was the break that we were talking about into the close of last week. Remember, we highlighted this saying, look, we're coming into support. I'm looking higher while above this basic trendline support. It extends off the low from December, really clean tag here in April, super clean tag here in July, little dribble below, but a quick recovery. It was the opening range low for the month. And once he finally broke it on that big reversal day, that kind of solidified our expectations um, for a buy. 
He says, I'm looking to buy still. Well, Wes, I can't really support you on that, man. Not from here. Um, I feel I kind of feel like we're just trying to catch a falling knife if we try to continue to press the longs on this. Um, you know, I think this was the last opportunity. Now that it's been invalidated, it's been invalidated. I got to stay objective. Um, you know, you don't want to get your emotions, let you get the, be the best of you on a trade like this. So, honestly, I really don't have anything to like 40, 42.18. I'll show you the near-term chart in just a moment. Um, but that's sort of the next downside level of significance from a Fibonacci standpoint. Uh, let's see if anything does emerge from this. Nope. Interesting. This could be something to pay attention to. Um, give me one sec here, Wes. Let me just tack this on here and see what it looks like. Okay, I can't say I'm crazy about the slope, but it's um, it's something worth considering. Uh, at the end of the day, any – okay, good. <laughs> he says, Mike, I have no positions in the Euro Aussie. All right, great. Um, I just wanted to make sure I'm, you know, making sure you're on the right side there. Look, I was all with you. I was all about it, looking to try to play the rebounds. In fact, we actually got some really nice long scalps off these last couple of weeks as we tried to bobble off this trend line, Right. But when the market speaks to us, we got to listen. And this break, and specifically with what it was doing on the daily chart, and the conviction of the break that we made back on the third, uh, 14th there, that's all I needed to hear. So look for maybe this median line to offer some near-term support if we do get a drop here in U.S. trade. Listen, at the end of the day, we need to get back above the median. Uh, let's call it the low day close. Okay, this is, let's clean this up. Forget the April close now, the April low. Keep in mind that low day close that we made for August, okay? That's 44.63. That's what I would need to see breach right here uh, to get back at least some sort of notion of, of constructive price action. Keep in mind that the weekly opening range comes in just higher. So really nice. That, a, that would be an objective break from price action. That would also be a reversal off of the 2016 low. You know, that for me would be something at least near term. Okay, great. Let's see if we can get back above that um, trend line support off the December lows. Uh, that being said, it's moving lower. It's an overbought, it's an oversold territory here. This is not when you want to start fading the move. You want to see recovery back into, back above the, uh, you know, 30 threshold here before you start to buy on near term price. But It'll base out. I think it'll base out. But with the strength you're seeing in the Aussie and the broader Euro dollar move, um, not too surprised. By the way, here is what Euro dollar looks like. We didn't cover that today, so that'll be number 13. Um, pretty clean with the price action. I was looking for the stretch once we cleared this when I came in. I was looking for the stretch to kind of see if we get a little bit higher from there, but we haven't quite gotten it. Here's the setup from last week. Levels remain unchanged. Um, we came off that 88.6 with precision start off the week. That was 109.63. That was literally the exact low. Here's the pop higher, finding support once again at this slope. At the end of the day, I think Euro is going to be a little bit more of a chop. You have the ECB on tap on Thursday. Um, so, you know, I don't think we'll necessarily make any major breaks before then. Broader focus is still down while below 110.66, 110.85. That hasn't changed. Major critical support, a little bit lower down at 109.31 into 109.37.
So you're kind of sitting mid-range. The way I would be looking to play the euro is if we do get a rally towards this median line, I'd be looking for possible short entries against that 1085 target. Uh, if we get a bounce or a drop into this region, might actually be a decent opportunity to try to fade some of that dollar uh, strength. Um, and an upside play here would give us a nice rebound uh, in the euro. So not really willing to touch the euro from right here, but that's kind of the game plan for me. Either looking to sell a, re sell a rally towards this region, or if we break lower, I think you might get a nice opportunity off that median line, which also converges on some major key FIB levels at 109.30, 109.36. Um, Wes, you says you're looking for uh, 142 as support. You're still talking about Euro Oz. 142. Yeah, that would be, a, that, like I said, yep, I would agree with that. That would be the first level I'd start looking at. Right around there. Any questions on the Euro? All right, so we've gone through all the majors. Um, you know, I don't really have much to say on the pound. That's the only one we didn't cover. Obviously, the CPI numbers that we got, slightly better than expected, did give the pound a little bit of an upside slope here. But, you know, how you trade that uh, from this level, you know, here are the CPI numbers that we got last night, stronger than expected on the month on month, stronger than expected on the year on year, even the core with a nice 0.2% uptick to 1.5%. Again, inflationary concerns really abating here as inflation finally starts to pick up uh, in the UK. You did see the sterling, like I said, see a nice little decent topside break of this near-term consolidation. Um, you know, look higher immediately into 123.56. Got another 50 pips to go uh, before you hit even some resemblance of slope resistance. Is UK valuing on its own merits now or still have the EU activity mixed um, on the prints for GDP, uh, for sterling GDP, for example? Um, look, you still want to, sterling is going to continue to do its own thing for a while, Eileen. Um, you know, take every trade on its own merits is something I'm always going to stick with, but. Um, by the way, what do you mean by GDP, uh, Eileen? I don't think we have GDP numbers this week out of the UK. Is there something I'm missing? Oh, CPI. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely take it on its own merits. Take it on its own merits. I'm just going to continue to tell you guys what I've been saying for the last couple of weeks. I have no interest in even scalping this. Um, it's just too stretched too stretched. We want more back and forth. The, the strength of our strategy is interpreting what near-term price action is saying. When you get a drop off like this, there's no previous price action on the, in this range to really give us enough um, technical clarity. So yeah, I don't really have much to do on this for now. Yeah, off the table for me too, Eileen. agree with you on that. No problem. Uh, Sterling, look for the pullback to 1864 high. Please ask the Donald to arrange a, a civil war. <laughs> um, the year 1864. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> well, I'm not going to get into the politics of that because that's a whole different topic for a whole different webinar. Maybe we can do a podcast about that. Um, I'd love to get your opinions on it, specifically those of our clients who are overseas. Um, it's always interesting to see what different people, how they view it and whatnot. But, um, yeah, watch the pound. Watch the upslope here. I do think you can crawl a little bit higher to fake out some people. But at the same time, before this thing finally makes a low, I do think it needs to, to see one more washout. Um, as far as UK data is concerned, we still do have, heading into the end of this week, uh, the jobless numbers, which come out on the 19th, followed by the 20th, the retail sales numbers for September. Okay, so we're not out of the woods yet as far as UK data heading into the close of the week.
All right, and we're going to go ahead and wrap it up there if there are no other questions. Uh, guys, like I said, there won't be a session tomorrow. I will be out, um, but we'll be back on Thursday morning. Always keep in mind, tomorrow is the midweek strategy webinar with Jamie Setley. That'll be at 1 p.m. Eastern uh, as scheduled. Always keep in mind, you can find the webinar schedule, guys, right on the homepage of SB Trade Desk, uh, clicking anywhere up top here. And there's the webinar schedule always updated for the week. Want to wish everyone the best of luck trading today, and I will see you guys Thursday morning. Cheers.